Welcome to the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology, where tonight the hometown Tigers look to earn a rare sweep in conference play against American International. The band, corner crew, Tiger fans making their way into the building early tonight as the puck will drop at 5.05. Number 23 for the RIT Tigers is Darren Brady, the junior defenseman from Michigan, recorded the game winner in the third period last night. We'll show you the highlights and hear from Brady coming up in just a bit. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pre-game live, presented by Taylor the Builder. So much to get to over the next half hour as we get you set for round two between RIT and AIC. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach, and welcome to RIT Sports Zone's live coverage of Tiger Hockey here on CW Rochester. Well, after recording a win, two losses, and a tie on the road in conference play the last two weekends, RIT head coach Wayne Wilson stressed this week the importance of winning consistently on home ice, something the Tigers simply have not done over the last three years in this building having won just 17 of 53 games. Let's pick up the highlights from last night here at the Policini Center. The crowd, a sellout, only the second in Policini Center's five-year history. First period AIC with some early opportunities, including right here, but Logan Trackett, the diving and save and the deflection. The big stop for the sophomore who stopped all 10 shots he faced in the opening period, Drackett was huge. AIC would have another great chance later in the period. They get it in their end, the Tigers end, and they throw it at the net. Why not, right? Off the post. Thankfully for the Tigers, they had that going for them to keep this one scoreless. Take another look from up top. Ping right off the bar. Tigers lucky there. Then in the later in the first period, the Tigers get on the board. AIC was on the power play, but RIT short-handed Alden Dupuy from Sean Cameron, his second on the year, first shorty of his career to give RIT the one nothing lead, second period. RIT now on the power play, AIC going the other way, Hugo Reinhardt short-handed, but Logan Drackett denies him on the backhander to keep it a one-goal game after two periods of play. In the third, the Yellow Jackets finally breaking through on the rush, Janice Jacks, no one stops him. Look at the pretty feed to Reinhardt. His third on the year tied the game at one, but RIT would respond. Later in the third, Darren Brady from the blue line winds up and finds the back of the net. His first of the season, just the fifth of his career at RIT. Oh, it's a big one for Brady and the Tigers as they hold on to beat AIC last night by a final of two to one. First goal since freshman year, can that be true? How does that feel? Yeah, honestly, it's, it's nice to get the monkey off the back. Um, just getting at the net and hope for it to go in. Just luckily it did. You know, they tie it up there in the third period and then the way Logan was playing, how much of a relief was it for you, for this team, to, to be able to put them in? Yeah, he really stood on his head tonight. Um, really helped out the bench. Everyone was up on the bench cheering for him. And I, I think that's kind of what gave us the energy to, to come out there every shift and look forward to getting the next goal. And, you know, luckily we got it. Yeah, I think our D played really, really solid tonight. They they let me see the puck as well as I could. And even when I couldn't see the puck, they were blocking shots and, and eating pucks for me. So um, I think our whole D core played a heck of a game tonight. And as well as our PK, they, they let me see pucks when I could. And again, when I couldn't, they were blocking everything and, and everything they could. The crowd tonight, I mean, can, can you talk about being back home in this atmosphere finally? It feels great. Like the crowd was unbelievable tonight. Um, Literally can't thank them enough. They they were into it the whole game, and they were so loud, and they gave us the energy we needed to, to win out and close out the game. Yeah, the Tigers were able to close it out for their first victory on a Friday night this season. With more on the victory and what we can expect to see here tonight, our John DeTulio standing by live now with RIT head coach Wayne Wilson. John? Eyes worked up. Yeah, it's something uh, you know all the defensemen are working on, but we got to get the puck much quicker back to the net. So we've been working this bank pass off the boards for a one time, and uh, we just started this week, and and he perfected it, and puck went in. But with so many teams blocking shots, you got to get it back to the net as quick as possible. And when the puck gets to the net, we just saw Logan talk about your goal, your sophomore goalie. What a difference a year makes for you, Wayne. Yeah, it's just a year under his belt. I think a lot more determined. I, I don't think he thought that last year was representative of himself. So we hope he can keep going. Uh, and he's going to have some dips uh, in the season. It's a long season, but we're happy with his play. And 
uh, really for us, it's just to keep moving forward in the right direction. Finally, I know you don't want to get in the box, but when you did, your special team, your penalty kill was great last night. Yeah, I thought our penalty killing in particular uh, early uh, uh, was really good, uh, but we kept giving them opportunities. And, and, and the more opportunities you get, the more comfortable they're going to get with trying to break it. Uh, so our, our, one of our goals now is to go four and under, uh, regardless if the refs are calling it tight or whether they're not calling anything. Uh, we've got to keep it uh, under four and under, uh, I think, in order to win. All right, best of luck. That's head coach Wayne Wilson. The Tigers go for the sweep tonight for a preview of AIC. Let's send it over to Kim Bernstein. Bernsey? Thanks, Johnny. Uh, coach, coming off a really close game, a lot of missed opportunities there in the end for you guys. How do you expect your team to respond today? Yeah, we've been here before. We were uh, two weeks ago down uh, Niagara, lost Friday, come back and win on Saturday. Uh, last week, Canisius dropped the Friday, been better on Saturday, so we're hoping for the same result tonight. Uh, Things got a little chippy towards the end there. Tensions running high. How do you help your team kind of channel that so that the penalties don't get out of control early? Oh, good question. We just got to play between the whistles. It's a big focus of ours. We want to be we want to be the best team in this league. Whistle to whistle. The the after whistle stuff. There's no there's no place for it in our game. And the face mask and a million other reasons. So we just got to stay away from that. Is there anything that you plan to see different from RIT tonight that you've prepared for? You know what? We kind of know what they are. They, they play true to their identity. They, are, they come at you. They don't really back off of their identity. Well, our execution will have to be a little better. And uh, like last night, I hope we have another great college hockey game. Coach, thanks so much for your time. We'll see you on the ice later. Kevin? All right, Kim, thanks so much. We look forward to your reports all night long here on our coverage of Tiger Hockey. Well, it's early, but we're already seeing tremendous parity in the Atlantic hockey standings again this year. The two-time defending champions from Air Force, they sit on top of the league after a 4-2 victory over Bentley last night. Niagara just two points behind, while AIC, tonight's opponent, tied for third with Army. RIT five points out of first place, just behind Canisius, who will be here to play the Tigers on Tuesday night. That's right, a Tuesday night game. Got to get used to that. It's a busy night for the Atlantic Hockey all across the board. Army already playing today. They avoided the sweep at Sacred Heart. They defeat... Uh, the Pioneers 4-1. to one. Meanwhile, in non-conference action, Penn State is at Robert Morris tonight. Clarkson visits Canisius at Harbor Center, then back in conference. Niagara hosting Holy Cross. Air Force goes for the sweep of Bentley out in Colorado Springs. Face off there, not until 9.35. Well, still to come on the program, John and Gene will join us to break down who we should be keeping an eye on here tonight at the Policini Center. Plus... Oh, he was here, and he only played one season at RIT, but it was a magical one. And now he's the only former Tiger who's made a career for himself at hockey's highest level. Our conversation with Vancouver Canucks defenseman Chris Tanev is on the way. But up next, with nine points, he's the Tigers' leading scorer so far this season, and he shares the captain's duties with fellow lineman, linemate rather, and senior Eric Brown. Kim Bernson will talk live with forward Abbott Gerduckis, number seven next as we get you set for face-off between AIC and RIT at 5.05. It's early tonight. This is RIT Sports Zone pre-game live. Back here on RIT Sports Zone pregame live. The Tigers and Yellow Jackets wrapping up warm-ups down on the ice. RIT and its fans hoping to break out the brooms later tonight if they can secure a rare weekend sweep. You know how hard that can be in the Atlantic Hockey Association. Well, there's been no sophomore slump when it comes to RIT goaltender Logan Drackett. In fact, his confidence and his play in net oh, has improved dramatically this season since earning the number one job outright and after last night's performance no surprise number 30 is back in the net again tonight Drackett stopped 32 of the 33 shots he faced against AIC and some of those shots as we showed you earlier on were spectacular making those safe Drackett has been steady in eight starts this year Wayne Wilson wanted to see his goaltenders have a safe percentage in the 90s last season they all fell short however this year so far Drackett has delivered saving almost 93 percent of the shots he has faced while on the other side Eric Lang mentioned not making many changes either Yellow Jackets head coach going to stick with Stefano Durante the Brampton Ontario native made some big saves as well last night uh, stopping 24 of the 26 Tiger shots he faced. We'll see how he does trying to rebound here tonight and get AIC a split. Well, it's one of the top lines in Atlantic hockey, and they will no doubt have a huge say 
and how far the Tigers will go this season. Eric Brown, Gabe Valenzuela, Abaker Duckus are the three Tigers top, uh, three of the Tigers top four scorers thus far. Kim Burnson standing by live now with one of the senior captains from that trio. Kim? Abbott, uh, yeah, no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> Abbott, uh, one of the, you have, having extremely awesome chemistry with your line mates, what do you guys attribute that? Yeah, I mean, we played together last year. We're trying to carry that over into this year. Um, we thought we could be better than we have so far, but so far it's been okay if we can keep going and maybe improve on what we've had already and should be good. You guys jumped out to a one-goal lead yesterday, kept that lead until the third period. How do you guys plan to, to do that again tonight and get out ahead of them early? Yeah, I mean, they're going to have a strong pushback tonight, but, yeah, the start is key. I think getting the first one in the first period is going to be huge for us. And last night was great playing with the lead. We thought we played well, so... We can get out to a good start tonight. It should be good. Abbott, thanks so much for your time. Good luck. Kevin? All right, Kim, thanks so much. Best of luck to Abbott and the Tigers here tonight. Well, through the years, the men's hockey program has seen its share of former players move on to play pro, whether here in North America or overseas. But only one has sustained a career playing at hockey's highest level. As a freshman, he played in the Frozen Four. And as a rookie, he played in the Stanley Cup Finals. And now, almost a decade later, Chris Tanev is the only former Tiger still going strong in the NHL. Kept in that point, Chris Tanev comes in, Tanev shot, SCORE! Chris Tanev, the freshman out of Toronto, scores on the... Chris Tanev was part of the most magical season in RIT Division I history. The Cinderella story of the tournament so far, the Rochester Institute of Technology out of Rochester, New York. They're going dancing to the Frozen Four in Detroit. Yeah, it was it was extremely special. Um, I I don't think I would be here um, right now without how well we did. It was it was such a great team and we had such good chemistry and a lot of us are still really close today. And we had a we had a great run and um, uh, it's definitely a very special time. The freshman defenseman was fourth in scoring on that Frozen Four squad with 10 goals and 18 assists, numbers that got the attention of several NHL scouts. Quick shot and a goal! Tenev with the goal! His eighth of the year and the Tigers go up 5-2. When you set foot on campus, is it safe to say you didn't envision an NHL career? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I figured I'd, I'd be at RIT for four years and then get my degree, potentially maybe go try and play in Europe or something for a bit and then and, and get to work. But I mean, uh, that year changed everything. Tanev left RIT after that one year and signed with the Vancouver Canucks. But even now, he admits that leaving wasn't an easy decision. Yeah, it was a very tough decision to leave. Um, obviously, I didn't, didn't want to at first, but then you... You realize you might not get this opportunity at all again. I figured you could always go back to school at, at the end of the day. And um, me and, and my family, we decided that it would be a good idea for, for me to try and go play. It turns out it was the right decision. Tanev is in his ninth season now and has played in over 400 NHL games. Time flies and, and you look back at things and... and you, you almost forget things that happen and, and then you'll you'll see a guy you played with six, seven years ago and it brings back a bunch of memories. But it's uh, it's been a good run so far and then hopefully I can keep uh, keep it keep it going and then keep having fun. Huh? It's been a pretty impressive run for a guy who almost quit hockey back in high school. But despite the success and the big NHL contract, Tanev remains as humble as ever. You know, I've seen a, a couple kids at our arena at RIT wearing your jersey, your number eight. What do you think about that when you when you hear that or when you see it? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I never, uh, you never imagined that growing up. It's but it's uh, it's awesome that that people look up to you and um, you just try and be the best role model you can and off and on the ice and, and when you're out there playing hard and then helping the team win. Yeah, Chris Tanev of Pros Pro, crediting his time here at RIT for his success. And you see right there, Tigers in the NHL. The other guy, Steve Pinizzato, the only other Tiger to have played in the NHL. Pinner appeared in 36 NHL games, scoring two goals while adding four assists. Our thanks to Chris Tanev for his time yesterday. As for him and the Canucks, 
The Sabres beat them in a shootout today, 4-3. to three. Well, still to come here tonight, John and Gene will join us with their keys to the game. Plus, the RIT Sports Hall of Fame. Two of RIT's most memorable teams have now been enshrined. That story is on the way as our coverage rolls on from the Gene Policini Center as we get you ready for the puck to drop between RIT and AIC. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Here's Cameron far side. He's got Dupuis in front. He needs to wait. Dupuis scores. Short-handed goal. Alton Dupuis makes it one nothing. RIT. And eventually, AIC might get tired. Opportunity uh -oh. a giveaway, and here we go. This is Reinhardt going in. Reinhardt, the backhanders oh. denied. Reinhardt gets it back, and Verduckis will take it away. Jax gliding through the neutral zone. Jax still with it. Jax, nobody picking him up. Jax backhander, but the Reinhardt wow. scores. Nobody picked up Jax to Reinhardt, and we are tied at one. Dupuy. Back up top. Brady fires. Scores! Are you kidding? From the blue line, the Tigers take the lead. Pushing it ahead. Capture. Swiped away. And a horrible sound. And the RIT Tigers hang on for the victory. Yeah, that is how game one of this two-game series between AIC and RIT unfolded here last night. The Tigers get the 2-1 victory thanks to goals from Alden Dupuis and Darren Brady. Dupuis' shorthanded goal in the first period is the Tigers' third shorthanded goal on the season, which is tied for second most in the country. AIC had 33 shots on net, but Logan Drackett, as we've mentioned throughout the broadcast, he was spectacular. Stopped all but one, preserving the Tiger victory last night. As we've mentioned, RIT will go for the rare sweep here tonight. A year ago, the Tigers recorded just three sweeps all season long, two coming against Robert Morris, one against Army. Joined now by John and Gene. And guys, Wayne keeps stressing it. Sweeps help you move up in the standings. And even though it's early in the season, those type of things matter now, and they'll matter come March, won't they? Oh, of course. Two points now is the same points as two points in February. Kevin, uh, glad to be here once again. John, the Tigers got the win, but they didn't play their best game last night, I thought, between penalties and some defensive miscues, some things they can improve on tonight. But they got the win. I think last year they lose that type of game. There's no question about it. They didn't have that great goaltending a year ago that they're having so far this year, and there is something different about this team. There is something about this chemistry that I thought they lacked at times last year. They didn't play well, but they still came away with two points. In the end, found a way to get it done. 2-1 the win Friday over American International. Now the second game tonight. Now, you want to say about a different team. How about American International? Last time they were here in 2016, the entire roster that suited up that night no longer dressing for this team. Uh, Blake Christensen, though, one of the leaders on this team, that front line the Tigers are going to have to shut down tonight. Phenomenal player. Even talk with Wayne, he goes, their makeup of this team is so different from even a year ago. But Christensen is their best player Leads them in goal scores, leads them uh, with points. There you look at uh, nine total points, four goals, five assists. He was quiet last night. RIT uh, making a concerted effort really to shut down number 18 in that top line. Expect Christensen to play even better tonight, or play better tonight. They're going to win and get two points. They need number 18 to step up. Now, if you're new to RIT hockey, you might not know that one of the best college hockey players in terms of offensive production, Eric Browning, Maybe all-round production. Last night, John, I loved the play he made at the end of the game, something that didn't show up in the box score. It did not show up, but Wayne talking with Bernsey afterwards made it. You brought it up during the broadcast. It was a huge play to prevent icing. He's the, he's the leader of this team. There's no question about it. You'll see him on the power plays out in front. All-time leading scorer for RIT at the Division I level. He does so many things well. A constant worker and a prolific goal scorer. Number 16 didn't score last night. But he did a lot of other things to help RIT win, that's for sure. A two-point weekend is okay. A three-point weekend is nice, but a four-point <laughs> weekend would be great, John. What has to happen tonight? Well, it starts with, you know, uh, they had a power outage last night. I mean, the 0 for 5 on the power play, they've got to do better. They're 13% in conference play on the power play, 20% overall. And Mr. Clean it up. Let's clean it up. <laughs> 47 times they've been shorthanded this year. That just can't get it done. Let's clean it up, Gino. And Dynamite Dracket, D squared, has been phenomenal. 31 saves last night. 
he's going to have to equal that, if not be better tonight, if RIT wants to sweep. Needs yeah, a little bit more uh, help in front of him, though. Yeah, uh, Logan Dracca getting the call once again tonight, 5.05. Did you like the Mr. Clean It Up? I did. I think I thought you would. <laughs> that was mine. You wrote that, huh? I wrote that one. That I was mine. <laughs> Can't take credit for the other two, but I wrote that one. All right, but he, he did something tonight. He's there, on. Kevin, he's, so he's on tonight. On. Penn on. State Kevin. wins, and he's he's rolling. Amen, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you at the top of the hour. Thanks so much. Well, Brick City Homecoming is a tremendous event each year across this campus and the Rochester community. For RIT Athletics, it's a chance to showcase its exceptional student athletes while also honoring past greats who have excelled in their particular sports. The RIT Sports Hall of Fame held its annual induction ceremony on Brick City weekend. The hall has founded 50 years ago when the school relocated here to the Henrietta campus. Over those five decades, 236 individuals have been inducted and six teams have been enshrined, including the 1983 and 1985 men's hockey teams, who are the only two to ever bring national championships home to RIT. Soundbite. It was very special. It was just, uh, you know, a new program that uh, when Coach, Coach Mason came in and, and made the step to Division Two, and um, three short years later to hoist the national uh, title was amazing. And as it was mentioned today, it was the first national championship in school history. So, you know, as a team, I, I think we feel a lot of pride in that and, and hope, you know, that we had a small part in, in where the school is today athletically. These two teams... Uh, really set the tone here at RIT and the athletics program and beyond. Um, such a great example for what we can accomplish here. And I point to, I point to them all the time that, uh, look at they were not even known. No one gave them any credit. And they came out of nowhere and won it and won it again. And it's just truly amazing. So anybody can do it. I mean, you put your mind to it and you play as a team uh, and you invest yourself, anything's possible. Two great teams there, Division II champs, Division III champs, the 83 and 85 men's hockey teams getting it done and now inducted into the Hall of Fame. Speaking of NCAA championships, RIT has two teams competing in the Division III tournament this weekend. Women's soccer, congratulations. They've advanced to the second round after defeating Susquehanna here on campus on penalty kicks. They'll play Messiah right here at RIT at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. As for women's volleyball, the Tigers' season, an incredible one is over after losing in five sets in the second round of the NCAAs to Carnegie Mellon. We're closing in on game time. We'll wrap things up from here next. This is RIT Sports Zone pre-game live. Great atmosphere, great game, and certainly a great win for Wayne Wilson and the RIT Tigers last night in front of just the second sellout crowd in Policini Center history. The last one coming against Colgate a few years back. Well, just a reminder that we are back with you on Tuesday night for the first weeknight game here on campus since 2013. Yeah, Tuesday night game. The Tigers host Canisius at 7.05. Our coverage will air beginning at 10 o'clock on CW Rochester. If you're not doing anything Tuesday night, come on out and join us live at the Gene Policini Center for the Tigers and Golden Griffins on Tuesday night. Tickets are available at the Policini Center box office where you can grab your seats right now by visiting RITtickets.com. Well, that's going to do it for us. Up next, the series finale between RIT and AIC. John and Gene will have the call for you in moments, and we'll see you right back here for the intermission report. Enjoy the game, everyone. RIT Sports Zone Live begins right now.